Another dramatic heartbreak ends the Bills' season as they are eliminated from the playoffs by the Kansas City Chiefs 27-24 to this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. Um, we are brought to you by 26 Shirts. Been talking about 26 Shirts for a while now. If you haven't done it yet, do yourself a favor. Go ahead, check them out. Um, awesome t-shirts, supporting awesome causes. Uh, we're talking about the Bills today getting knocked out of the playoffs once again by the Kansas City Chiefs and obviously doing it in dramatic fashion <laughs> the way only the Buffalo Bills can. Uh, it just seems like so long since we had to deal with, you know, losses that you, you just knew, you know, um, th- these gut wrenching, rip your heart out losses. Um, uh, they're absolutely brutal. <laughs> they're terrible for my heart health. Um, but Hey, that's part of being a Bills fan, right? Um, so for this episode, honestly, for as frustrating as it was, and as disappointing as it was, um, this is not going to be the gloom and doom episode. Um, this is not going to be, you know, everybody sucks, fire everybody. Um, it's just not, it's not, just not where my energy is right now. And look, we're all fans out there. If if you've gone through this season and you feel right now like. Everybody needs to get fired. They need to rip it down to the studs. Fine. Like, that's that's cool. Um, it's just not where I'm at right now. Um, I feel like for a season that started with such high expectations, um, the way it went, the way... The ups and downs of it, um, just the way the season went, I feel like this last game of the season was the embodiment of of the whole season um i think the team was fortunate to get there um you know not like it was a gift to them they did have to go on a tear to even you know make the playoffs um but just kind of playing the dolphins in the last game of the season and it basically being if you won you were forget about the seeding it was you know winning in um how many teams do you have huge expectations for that need the last week of the season, you know, to make sure they make it into the playoffs. Um, and I get there was a lot of circumstances leading up to that, and they really were playing, you know, the best ball that we saw this season going into that game against the Chiefs. Um, at a certain point, the issue that, issues that we had all throughout the season that we were, you know, scrapping and clawing to overcome, sometimes, you know, with a dramatic loss, sometimes barely winning... Um, the issues that played this all season showed up in that Chiefs game. And and honestly, looking at it objectively, taking a step back, um, it's not even issues that were kind of really gone during that last, you know, winning streak. There, there were still some issues there. They were just overcoming it. Um, and we talked so many times throughout the season of like, yep, they got... They got away with a couple in this one, but, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, you're not going to get away with the same stuff. Um, it it came back here, and um, simple things, you know, we see in the Pittsburgh game, Tyler Bass missed a field goal, have one blocked, and, I mean, this game comes down to a 40-something yard attempt for Bass to tie it up. Um, yes, I expect my kicker to make that kick um you need that from your kicker in this modern end of nfl um especially you know he's top fit top five paid kicker in the league um but saying it all comes down to that and you know he costs us the game and everything it's just not the case i mean there was some play calling in there i l- didn't like there was some execution i didn't like and it, it's all these things that add up together um to end up where we are and really throughout the season the biggest glaring issues the bills had for me um 
It's just kind of lack of a deep threat receiver on offense. Um, defensively, just battling injuries all year. Um, and then just special teams blunders at the worst times. Um, so, I mean, I was kind of excited going into this playoffs because we saw like these other teams getting banged up going into it. And, you know, right as the season was ending, we were getting healthy. Um, Daquan Jones comes back, you know. Uh, Razul Douglas looked like he was going to be, you know, ready to go this game. Terrell Bernard was on the fence. Um, but, but going into the playoffs, we were, like, finally getting healthy. And then just between Miami and Pittsburgh, like, we just got decimated again. And injuries are going to be part of every season, unfortunately. Um, it's something that you have to overcome. But, I mean, looking at a game where... We've already lost Milano for the season. Um, Dodson was on the fence about playing. Um, Bale Inspector was his backup. He got hurt. Dodson got hurt for a while in this game. Um, AJ Klein, uh, I believe he got hurt a little bit, but you know he was on his couch getting ready for family vacation. He comes in against Pittsburgh and he's the hero. And against the Chiefs, you know, a veteran quarterback like Mahomes, uh, stud tight end and Travis Kelsey, they, they abused him. They took advantage of him. And these aren't excuses. I'm not, I'm not justifying, you know, any reasons that the bills lost, just kind of talking through it. Um, because despite all that, the bills had chances to win this game. Um, the defense, the defense got absolutely decimated in this game. The, the defense was not good. Um, that being said, when push came to shove, they they gave the Bills offense two chances to control that game. And the one was Boyer forcing the fumble like right at the goal line from Hardman. Um, you know, not only did the Chiefs not get any points there, but it gave the offense the ball back. And then I believe we weren't able to do anything with that position. Defense came up with another big stop and... You know, here we here we are. There was chances to win this game. Um, you know, we have Trent Sherfield in there instead of Gabe Davis. Um, as much hate as Gabe gets, as much as you know, I I personally am all for letting Gabe walk. Um, you know, we have two shot plays to uh, Sherfield that he's not able to haul in. Would Davis get him? I don't know. Davis has had you know some unsure hands. Um, himself but as far as like the guy that can make the plays out of structure down the field um, Gabe Davis has been that guy um, in some instances and we even saw Diggs with you know whatever that that ball was like 75 in the air from Josh Allen and it goes right through um, Diggs hands and that that's another big play I, I've seen a lot of criticism for Brady and his play calling in this game and, you know, not having the big explosive plays. Um, this is how good, smart defenses are going to defend the Bills, right? They're, it, it's what the Bills defense does to, you know, other teams with electric players and to stop the explosives. We, we do it against Tyreek Hill in Miami. Um, it, it's that, you know, cover two, keep everything in front of you and come up and tackle and you limit the explosive plays and you know so much criticism for Josh Allen and his decision making this year um for his you know ball security Josh Allen in my opinion played this game about as good as we could have asked for he was effective on the ground um he made good decisions with the ball he didn't put the ball in danger um, the one it keeps seeing flash up constantly is um, towards the end of the game where he misses Shakir in the end zone and you see Diggs, you know, running free underneath. Um, looks like it would have been a pretty easy first down. When you rewatch that play a couple times, that pass was thrown with so much anticipation. That was going to hit Shakir right on the numbers and nobody's having the conversation about Diggs was open for a first down. Um, if we score on that play, right? And, you know, Josh Allen gets 
bumps in the pocket as he's releasing it and makes the ball come up a little short. And I, I think Tony Romo was even on, um, on the play-by-play saying, you know, if the Bills lose this game, remember this play right here. This will be the reason why. And you know, there's there's so many other factors that go into a game that you can't just boil it down to one play. But here we are talking about, you know, we had a check down option open there that would have gotten the first down. Well, if it, it goes the other way too, right? So if if Josh Allen hits that check down to Diggs and whatever, we don't end up scoring on that drive and say the game ends with the same result. Well, now we're going to be sitting, you know, behind the screens looking at, oh, well, look at look at how he could have had Shakir open on, on this one here. So, you know, it, it's always playing the results and, you know, did did... Did Allen go with a little bit of a riskier play to try to get that touchdown? Yeah. That's what Josh Allen does. That's why we love Josh Allen. That's what makes him so incredible is he he threads these needles. He makes these ridiculous plays um, that other people won't roll the dice on. Um, that's the balls he has. That's what makes him special. Um, so, you know, getting bumped in the pocket and having a miss there. I can't put that too much on him. You know, it, it happens, right? Um, I'm looking more at, you know, these explosive plays that we needed to get, um, you know, when you, when you have the chances and we've, we saw Allen and Diggs miss a ton, um, this year on some of that deep stuff, especially down the stretch. Um, I think there's some, some misuse of, um, Diggs and that's a conversation for another time. Um, can be something we get into in the off season of the way Brady's using digs. Um, he doesn't have to be your shot player, but when when he gets down the field and he has a step on a defender, and Allen is able to put an absolute dime right into his hands, and he's not able to come. To, that's the play that you need from your whatever thirty million dollar wide receiver. Um, that's one he has to get done, and. I, I'm not going to sit here and get into, you know, the the cryptic stuff all uh, last offseason, the drama going on uh, last offseason where where Diggs was frustrated. What I, I don't have a problem with him doing that. A lot of people hate that. Um, I think there's different ways it could be handled that could have been better, whatever. Um, for what it's worth, he was showing the same kind of frustrated fr- frustration that we are. Um, but now in this situation, if you're if you're going to have that level of frustration at not getting it done, um, then you know when you're that guy, you're probably second, third highest paid player on the team. You're just behind Josh Allen. Um, when the game's on the line and that that ball comes to you, um, you got to come down with it. That's where I get into you know the Bills not having that um, really true down the field target and. I absolutely love what we have in Kincaid. I think he had a tremendous rookie year. Um, I think that he's a guy that it's going to be great for the Bills going forward. Um, Shakir also emerged down the stretch this season. Um, just having an absolutely bananas, you know, tail end of the season. You'll see the stat floating around out there about like the efficiency of him. He had something like 460 uh, yards on like 30 targets 32 something like that um and Diggs had like 430 yards on um 80 targets um so just what we saw from Shakira and Kincaid um it's encouraging and you know I I, I don't want to go right to you know whatever it is what it is you know next year's our year we're fine whatever um every year does change a little bit um, the teams around you change a little bit. Um, I do think that there was there was a much clearer path um, to getting to the Super Bowl than you'll see in most seasons. You know, with Burrow being out and you know some of the key injuries on other teams. You see a team like Houston and um, C.J. Stroud being you know looking like a legit quarterback. You know, now Houston's going to be in the mix every year. Um, you never know what's going to happen year to year right you know beginning of this season you would have said you know Bills Chiefs Bengals that's you know the cream of the crop and then what week week three or whatever 
Um, you know, Burrow's dealing with injuries. They have a terrible start. Burrow ends up going down for the season. And and even with that, you know, the Bengals are competitive down the stretch. Um, so what do they look like um, getting Burrow back? Um, they, they just lost their offensive coordinator to go be the head coach of the Titans. There's so much that changes um, year over year with each team. And, you know, we can look at it as like, this was this was the team to get it done with. Um, you know, we have aging players that you know some hard choices are going to be coming up, and you know it's a it's a business, and it sucks that you know some of these guys that have been with us through you know turning this whole organization around to being a constant competitor. You'd love to see them, you know, be guys that could have been around if if we were able to get it done and win the Super Bowl. Um, realistically you know times are going to change and as long as you have Josh Allen as your quarterback as long as you keep building around him you're going to have this chance and all throughout the offseason we'll talk about you know was it time to make a move at coach you know there's still a chance that it could happen um you know how many times do you let a McDermott led um, team losing the playoffs before you know it's not good enough before you're wasting Allen's career um all all different discussions that we can get to um throughout this season but um for this for this episode I, I didn't want to harp too much on kind of you know the play-by-play and what I liked and what I didn't like we if you're listening to this episode you watched the game you probably found a way to maybe watch it back again Um, we know what happened in the game and I think this is kind of, it's kind of what we're going to be dealing with, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, Brady Manning, if you want to call it, uh, Jordan Ewing, I've seen all kinds of comparisons out there to just, you know, somebody that was great that had somebody else great at the same time that was just getting it done that little bit more, um, I think this Chiefs team has some issues going forward, same as the Bills, and they're going to have the same type of opportunities to address it going forward. Um, You saw kind of their moves to uh, be able to replace Tyreek Hill. They tried to do it with, you know, a committee of uh, Valda Scantling and um, Kadarius Toney and, you know, Rishi Rice as a rookie who emerged, but... The, some of the other options that they they brought in were just complete flops and they're they're gonna have a another crack at fixing those so the chiefs are gonna come back as a different team next year um but the bills have that same opportunity and you know it's a year that they can come back and get healthy and see what we have in the tank for next year um it sucks right now it really does uh especially coming down to the wire and if you're going to miss that kick I I wish it would have at least gone to the left like the comparisons that we have to to wide right it was it was like a very similar distance kick um anybody that's watched wide right like the the ball path like almost looked the same as it it was just an absolutely brutal way to go but I will say for anybody that wants to sit here and, you know, destroy Tyler Bass, you know, he cost us the game, whatever, like he didn't, uh, there, there was some play calls that I didn't like, um, on that drive in particular, of, you know, you got the ball, you're threatening field goal range, uh, right around the two minute mark and come out, pass play, pass play. That's, you know, you've, you've been you've been running Allen all game you've been using his game legs all all game you've been using the run game to pretty good success all game um to kind of not not try to milk down some more clock as you try to get yards there um it's a, it's a little head scratching to me um cuz even if Bass makes that field goal we feel good for another couple minutes whatever but you're giving Patrick home Patrick Mahomes Andy Reid, you know, the ball back in a, in a tight game with something like a minute, minute and a half left. Um, 
Whereas at least if you put yourself in the same position and killed a little bit more clock, you feel a little bit better. Um, but we've seen it with 13 seconds. You know, we, we've seen what they're capable of. Um, so just, you know, best making that field goal. You know, maybe we took more time off the clock. Um, maybe we go to overtime. We've seen that go sideways too. So, you know, anybody that just wants to put this um, right on Tyler Bass for like that, it's just not how football works. There's so many different plays leading up to that. Um, and the other one, I, the other one I'm going to address before we go to the break, just because I've, I've seen some wild all, all over the place opinions on it. So I feel like I have to get my, give mine. Um, the fake punt. For me, I'm pretty much always, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be team don't run a fake punt. Um, just don't think there's enough success with the fake punt. Um, fourth and five, you know, Damar Hamlin, pretty much anybody back there, I, I'm not going to feel good about converting that. You, you know, you get the element of surprise, whatever. Five yards is a, a lot of yards to get in the NFL for, in particular, somebody that's not, you know, carrying the ball off. And do I feel a little bit different if it's whatever, say a healthy Naheem Hines back there, something like that? Maybe a little bit. Um, for me, if you're going for it on fourth down, uh, the the element of surprise isn't really what I'm going for. Um I have a $250 million quarterback. Um, I have a top flight offense. I'm not really banking on the element of surprise to to be what carries that play. I'm putting the ball into my unicorn quarterback's hands. I'm running some sort of, you know, RPO triple option. He has, you know, a moving pocket where he can choose, you know, if he sees a crease to just run for it, you have... Uh, Dawson Knox uh, you have a Dalton Kincaid leaking out shit for how many times you brought in Edwards as an eligible lineman tight end type player you haven't leaked him out and done a pass all year you know that's a very high variance play that's a guy that doesn't catch the ball a lot um, but if you're going for the element of surprise we saw uh, Detroit do um, some things like this um, I'm putting the ball in Josh Allen's hands um, with any sort of, you know, game deciding decision. I'm going to let Alan go out there and either make the player or not. And I'm going to live with that over a uh, fake punt. Furthermore, for me, for the fake punt, if we're talking, you know, element of surprise, we haven't run a fake all year, um, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you catch him sleeping. I would counter that with just... Andy Reid is a seasoned veteran coach that's had great success in the league. Um, he has attention to detail. I'm willing to bet any money that I have to my name that they're looking at the Bills throughout the week, game planning, and they're looking at, you know, Sam Martin pulled his hammy last week. They're on the fence. They, you know, added Matt Hawk. Maybe he's playing in the game. Um... But if Sam Martin's playing, like, we're going to get after him. We're going to, you know, if he starts having, you know, unsuccessful punts, watch out for the fake. Um, there's just there's just no way in my head that that isn't something that Andy Reid was talking to his team about all week. Um, so whatever, that's my two cents on it. It's easy to play in the benefit of hindsight. If you did catch him sleeping and it worked, then it's a bold, great decision. Um, ultimately, don't have a huge problem with it. It's not something, you know, we get cute with and do all the time. Um, it's something that, you know, we busted out right there. Tendency breaker type deal. Maybe you can catch them sleeping. Um, but for my money, if I'm going for it on any fourth down situation, uh, it's going to be in Josh Allen's hands. Um, that's going to take care of the, the game portion of it. Um, when I come back from break, just want to talk a little bit about some things we're going to be looking looking at as we move forward in the offseason. Um, so stick around. Hey, this is Brother Bill. Now back to the show. 
Welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Um, If you've made it this far in the episode, um, just do us a favor, like, share, subscribe, um, tell a friend about it. We're going to be coming out all throughout the offseason, so um, just make sure you're not missing any episodes. We'll be talking about the draft, free agency, um, some wish lists, some things that we'd like to see done with the team, um, just all kinds of stuff. And then um, check out the apps, um, the website, I'm sorry, wanderingbuff.com. Producer Jake has been doing tremendous work over there. Um, we're working on getting a couple more um, writers throughout this offseason to just kind of keep bringing you um differing opinions so you're not just getting you know only my opinion you might be listening to this right now and think i'm an idiot (laughs) um it's been suggested before um but just having a couple other guys writing for the website um so check it out if you're ever interested in getting involved with the show drop us a comment um email us on the website whatever you want to do um but get in contact we're always looking to get people involved um This side of the episode, I do just want to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the idea that of this kind of never being the same team again, right? And as much as we see, you know, in every NFL franchise, there's there's turnover year to year. Um, For the most part, the last two, two, three years, we've been doing some, you know, tweaking. But your overwhelming core on this team has remained the same um, for quite some time. Um, And we're going to have to start looking at some tough decisions of guys that have been tremendous for the organization, that have been fan favorites. Um, And and we're going to have to make hard decisions about where we can spend money, um, where we need to get younger. And you got Josh Allen's contract hitting. Um... It's going to be a really interesting offseason, and honestly, kind of sitting here, what are we, January 23rd, if I had to guess right now, I would say that there's a chance that we take a little bit of a step back next season, and I kind of, you're reloading on the fly, you got to reload and reset. Um, part of me thinks maybe a, a little half step back, part of me is like, you still got Josh Allen. You still got some weapons on this offense. You've kind of built around him. You can always add to that. Um, they, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not a setback. Maybe it's full sprint forward. Um, a lot of the players to me coming up that you're going to have to make tough decisions on. Um, your Michael, uh, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, um, Trey White, unfortunately, you know, back to back terrible season ending injuries um are you able to have him back at any as any sort of you know version of who we knew Troy Trey White to be um one of my favorite all-time bills Trey White right there it's also a business it's also really difficult decisions that are going to come down I know the organization loves him too um but for for being a guy that's getting a little bit older um just really devastating you know, lower body injuries that are hard to bounce back from in that position. Um, you got decisions to make there. Um, Dane Jackson, uh, he's, you know, wasn't great in this game, but he's been valuable depth. Brazil Douglas, tremendous, probably my favorite deadline ac- acquisition ever. He's also not, you know, a spry young guy. Um, so just... A, a ton of question marks going into the season. That's kind of just on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you also got Puna Ford, Daquan Jones, uh, Epinesa, Floyd, move over to the offensive side of the ball. You got um, Gabe Davis is the highlight there. But there's just so many players that are up right now. And I feel like this time of the year, it always looks more concerning than it is with Brandon Bean because he does so many like of the one year contracts there's a lot of turnover every year um there's usually a couple guys that we really want back and we're upset when they don't come back and then we replace them with somebody else that we really like um so we'll we'll see what Brandon Bean has up his sleeve um but I will say 
as much as I have the concern that we might be taking, you know, a little half step backwards this this coming season. Um, but my reason for optimism is also just it's like right on the same level. Uh, I mean, we we have a guy. Um, everybody was really concerned with the linebacker position going into this year. Well, now you have uh, Terrell Bernard looks like, you know, a star in the making. Um, unfortunately, he, he's hurt down the stretch. Um, you you went this whole season without Milano. Um, he's going to be back and healthy. Um, you saw Elam get, get a quick look at the end of the season here. You know, he struggled at first and then comes away with a huge interception and a couple pass breakups. All of a sudden... You know, do we have something there again? Um, Dalton Kincaid um, was just great throughout this whole rookie season. We saw Shakir emerge. James Cook become, you know, a superstar running back. Um, probably most importantly for how long we've talked about keeping Josh Allen upright. Just tremendous job from the offensive line this year. Um, keeping the continuity there. And for the most part, these are some younger guys with kind of spaced out contracts. Um, you know, Osiris Torrance, a rookie, McGovern just signed a contract. Um, Spencer Brown's going to be coming off his rookie deal. Uh, Deion Dawkins been extended. Um, Mitch Morris is probably the only guy that you're, you're thinking about. Maybe you have to make plans for sometime soon. Um, but I feel like we've been having that conversation for like four or five years now. Um, you also have, you know, Brian Bates as your valuable depth there. Maybe maybe is it time for him to step up? I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens there. But the consistency that we got from this offensive line uh, is it, probably the biggest biggest thing for me. And then you know, kind of like how I talked about with the Chiefs, and they had um, Velda Scantling and Kadarius Tony, and they they were just kind of these these whiffs of people that they thought were going to be impactful. I, th- I feel like we had a similar situation with Sherfield and Hardy. Personally, I was very excited for both of them. Um, and, and both of them were very small factors in the offense throughout this year. Um, I'll tell you, as I sit right now, number one on my wish list this year is to go out and bring in, like Gabe Davis Walk, um, there's a lot of things I like about Gabe Davis. I think we need the the true field stretching ability at the number two receiver. Um, and go ahead and bring in one of these kind of value value veterans that we've seen over the years. Your Smoke Browns, your Manny Sanders. Bring me in one of those guys that can start week one if need be. But go out and make some, some valuable... Uh, valuable investments at the wide receiver position um not only you know has this become a league where you can't just have that true number one and then kind of some guys around him teams are starting to have like two bona fide studs at those positions and a dangerous guy in the slot i think you need to start looking for not only that true number two receiver but you have to acknowledge that Diggs isn't getting any younger and I think we, for the most part, all love digs. Father Time is undefeated, and I, I would be looking for maybe even a double dip at receiver this year, maybe one in the early first couple of rounds and one a little bit later. Um, we've seen Bean have some success with some late-round picks and um, Khalil Shakir, Isaiah Hodgins, who's obviously not on the team anymore but had some success. Um Give me kind of a flyer on a guy you like in the fifth round that maybe maybe they can take over and um, be the number two for whatever guy that we draft that can be a number one um, and just, just keep the cupboards full for Josh Allen. Um, I think there's some work to do on defense too, but this team is going to go as far as Josh Allen and the offense go, and we, we've seen that for, for, for years. You know, the defense can be great and help out push comes to shove in the league right now it's what you can get done on offense um so you gave josh allen some some meaningful investments this past off season do it again um you brought in a lot of offensive line help 
um, to shore up the depth. Just keep keep going, keep loading up Josh Allen, get him another wide receiver too. And if you shit, it's it's kind of the Elam Benford situation here, where you know Benford was a late round pick, Kyrie Elam was the first round pick. Benford ends up being the stud, and we're still unsure about who Kyrie Elam is on the team. Do that for me at receiver too. Uh, if if your first round guys doesn't work out for whatever reason, hopefully you got a, a, another fifth round hit. Um, Beans had some great success with the late round picks. Love for it to be, you know, that true stud first round pick. But if you're getting guys, you're getting guys. Uh, so we'll look at all that more as we're moving through the off season. Start looking at. Um, some free agent wish list, some players to look at in the draft, um, a ton of stuff to go over throughout the off season. And, you know, as you always say in football, there is no off season. So we won't be taking much time off. We'll be here every week with you. Um, let you know in advance if we're taking any time off, there's going to be some vacations coming up here, whatever. Uh, but we'll keep you posted. Um, like I said, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Make sure you're catching every episode. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this week and this season. Um, hopefully next year, man. As always, go Bills. Go Bills.